जय हिंद एवरी वन माई नेम इज़ अमन गुप्ता एंड आई एम वर्किंग एज एन असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन एम सी डिपार्टमेंट इन अजय कुमार गर्ग इंजीनियरिंग कॉलेज टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी साइबर सिक्योरिटी हु सब्जेक्ट फोर डिज के सी ए ए जीरो वन नाउ दीज आर द टॉपिक्स विच वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस टूडे दैट आर सिक्योरिटी थ्रेट्स that consists of viruses spoofing what are the malicious software what is application security what are the data security considerations different type of security technologies what is intrusion monitoring detection system and what are the access control systems so these are the topics which we are going to discuss today first of all security threats what is security threat so in computer security a threat is a possible danger that might exploit a vulnerability vulnerability means the loopholes of the system through which the viruses enters in our system to breach security and therefore cause possible harm and it can uh, harm our system so uh, we can divide threats security threats into two parts that is external threats and internal threats so what are external threats it occurs when someone outside the network creates a security threat to the network suppose there is a network in which there are some systems attached to that network and somebody from outside attacks to this network so that is called the external threats and what are internal threats it occurs when someone from inside the network creates a security threat to the network when someone from inside the network tries to harm the other systems suppose this is the system which tries to harm the other systems in the network so that is called the internal threats first is virus what is a virus a virus refers to a piece of software that is designed and developed with purpose of infecting a computer system and perform some illegal operations so virus can harm our systems in different ways a virus infected system can hamper the data stored on a drive and uh, maybe crash the whole operating system virus can attack via infected media like cd pen drive usb drives internet and many other ways there are different type of viruses that are today present in uh, this world of internet so first is polymorphic what is polymorphic polymorphic viruses are complicated computer viruses that attack computer data types and functions each polymorphic virus duplicates into itself into millions of copies a polymorphic virus can duplicate itself into millions of copies and can have a a uh, very uh, very much harm to our uh, entire system or entire network in addition it is able to hide itself within the files to avoid the detection so it hides itself from the other to uh, from antivirus software and many other things that we uh, use to uh, detect the uh, viruses in our system it can also change the content of the messages for example if pressing the c button types uh, suppose anybody in on the system press c button presses on c button then it types a in place of c so if anybody writes cat cat so it can be aat act so the content of the message can be changed through polymorphic 
virus. Second one is stealth. Stealth virus can attach to the boot sector of the hard disk. It masks itself from application and from being detected. So, it is difficult to detect the system. Brain is the first stealth virus. Brain is the first stealth virus spread internationally during the mid 1980s. Third one is retrovirus. A computer virus that actively attacks an antivirus program or programs in an effort to prevent the detection. Bypass in installed antivirus. So, retrovirus that actively attacks an antivirus program. So, the main function of retrovirus is to uh, attack on an antivirus program like Norton Internet Security, Avast and many types of uh, antivirus programs that be installed on our system to detect the viruses. So, bypass installed antivirus. Its main function is to bypass the installed antivirus. Fourth one is multipartite. A multipartite virus is a computer virus that infects and spreads in multiple ways. The virus provides harm to a system in such a way that it infects boot sector, memory, disk and executable files that we called as exe files, dlls, exes and memory and disk files. For example, invader, flip and tequila. Now, next is armored. Armored slow the process uh, of the virus detection. What, what it does? Placing armor around a virus makes it difficult and time consumer, time consuming poor computer experts to take the virus apart understand how it works and then design methods for defeating. Next is companion. Uh, companion, what companion virus does? It attaching itself with other programs. When attached with legitimate programs, uh, get saved with different file extension and it is saved in a temporary directory of a computer. Next is phase. Modification in other application and program and uh, the only solution is to recover or reinstall. If uh, the phase virus attacks a program, then uh, we cannot recover uh, that uh, the part of uh, uh, program or software that is infected. The only solution is to recover or reinstall our program. Next one is macroviruses. It affects the enhancements available in the application program like stop the MS word spell check and many other enhancements that we have provided with the um, programs that is called the macrovirus. Now what are the symptoms of virus infection? So what are the symptoms that if we have a virus in our system then launch process of an application or a program gets slow. So, it slows the applications that we already have in our system. The process of launching and uh, working gets slow. Files either appears or disappears. It may be the another factor of the uh, infection that we see in our system that the files either appears or disappears sometimes. Size of install program gets changed automatically. Interface of applications or programs might get changed. Uh, in uh, many times we have seen that the interface, the user interface uh, through which we interact with our application uh, gets changed after the infection of a virus. When we our system gets infected from any virus. Systems get shut down or restart in an automatic manner. System our system gets shut down and many times restart automatically. Access to drives is restricted. Sometimes we have seen that uh, when we try to access some drive or D drive or try to open E drive, then a message comes that you are not authorized to open that drive. Now the virus categories. 
we can categorize viruses in some types that is like trojan horse what is trojan horse it is transmitted to a system under mask of an legitimate application or program like attachment to a program or as a part of installation process second one is logic bombs a logic bomb is a piece of code that is inserted into an operating system or software application that implements a malicious function after a certain amount of time that means that virus insert in our system um or virus already installed in our system but it explodes or uh, starting harm to our system after only after a certain amount of time suppose that uh, maybe a function runs on the system then only it logic bomb activates uh, or uh, the specific conditions are met suppose uh, there is a function when this function runs then only the logic bombs try to uh, start their program of harm the computer logic bombs are often used with viruses worms and trojan horses to uh, time them to do maximum damage before being noticed so it can do a uh, very much harm to our system and can have maximum damage to our system code executed when a predefined event occurs now what is worms it is self sufficient to replicate themselves worms are the viruses which replicate themselves a computer worm is a stand alone malware computer program that replicates itself in order to spread to other computers it uses a computer network to spread itself relying on security failures on the target computer to access it and unlike a computer virus it does not need to attach itself to an existing program it is an independent malware or independent program who can work independently and replicate itself uh, to damage the entire system or the network now these are the antivirus software that we have used to uh, detect the detect the viruses and to remove the malicious software like norton metcafe kaspersky avas quickheal avj and we have uh, a number of uh, antivirus softwares available in the market now next one is spoofing what is spoofing uh, spoofing means to provide false information wrong information about your identity to gain unauthorized access of other computers uh, that means that the person person a who is not a part of a network person a is not a part of a network but person b who is a part of network so person a uh, what can he do he can mask himself as person b mask and try to show himself as a legitimate user and want to access the network resources so the uh, what are the types of uh, spoofing first one is ip spoofing connection hijacking through a fake ip address content spoofing ask your personal information caller id spoofing the actual originating station uh, caller id display which is not the actual one email spoofing originating from somewhere so first of all uh, ip spoofing attacker uses ip address of another computer to acquire information or gain access so that is the spoofed address and then 
the reply sent back to that address attacker attacks on that computer and he sent back the response attacker changes his own ip address to spoofed address so attacker what attacker does he is the attacker so he change his ip address to the address is to uh, 30 10.10.20.30 attacker can send messages to a machine uh, masquerading as a spoofed machine attacker cannot receive messages from that machine he can only send the messages but attacker cannot receive messages from that machine now next one is content spoofing content spoofing is to use the dynamic html and frames to create a website with the expected url and a similar appearance and then prompt the user for personal information this is also common with email alerts account notifications as we have seen in many uh, today's in social media accounts that uh, there are different apps who wants to uh, gain your personal information for their own benefit so that is called the content spoofing now next one is caller spoofing so the practice of causing the telephone network to display a number of the on the recipient's caller id display which is not the actual originating station so the messages or the uh, name uh, displayed on the caller id machine is not the same next one is email spoofing attacker sends messages masquerading as someone else means create an account with similar email address as sanjayguel@yahoo.com a message from this account can perplex the student modifying a mail client um, attacker can put in any return address he wants in the mail he sends telnet to port uh, 25 most mail servers use port 25 for smtp so attackers log on to this port and composes a message for the user which he can send to the multiple users next is denial of service attacks that is called dos attacks attack through uh, which a person can render a system unusable or significantly slow down the system for legitimate users Uh, how by overloading the system so that no one else can use it and what are the types of dos attack uh, first of all crashing the system or network how uh, it can be done through send the victim data or packets which will cause system to crash or reboot second one is exhausting the resources by flooding the system or network with information since all resources are exhausted others uh, and are denied to access the resources third one is distributed dos attacks are coordinated denial of service attacks which involve several people and machines to launch the attacks next is backdoor or trap door what is it backdoor or trap door so the secret entry into a program is called the backdoor trapdoor uh, which a hacker can use for their for his own benefit to gain access to a application or a software allows those who know access bypassing use security procedures uh, these backdoors or trapdoors are uh, may be uh, uh, used by the programmers for their own own convenience but the hackers get benefited through these loopholes or you may say you, uh, you can see that backdoor or trap door or uh, to his own benefit so have been commonly used by the developers see these doors these backdoors or trap doors usually used by the developers but this can be exploited by the attackers or threat when left in production programs this can allow allowing exploited by the attackers uh, attacker can get benefit and exploit 
through uh, which we can a uh, threat can be entered through these doors very hard to block in operating system it is very hard to block these uh, trap doors in the operating system it requires very good software development and updates so it is very necessary that we have uh, installed the updates of the software regularly in our system next is malicious software malicious software malware is any software that gives partial to full control of your computer to do whatever the malware creator wants so that is called the malicious software it can be anything malicious software can be a virus can be a worm trojan horse adware spyware rootkit anything it can be anything so the damage done uh, can vary vary from something slight as changing the author's name on a document to full control of your machine without your ability to easily find out various malicious programs like uh, trap door logic bomb trojan horses viruses bombs are uh, dos attacks and many more so we can classify malicious program that which needs the host program and there are some independent uh, we have multiple type of uh, pro malicious software like trap doors logic bombs trojan horses and viruses and independent like uh worms and zombie and it can also replicate themselves into many viruses now we have different type of security techno uh, technologies available that is data and application security has become one of the most prominent issues so uh, for this we have different type of security technologies available first of all like firewall vpn intrusion detection and access control so uh, first of all we have uh, seen firewall what is firewall firewall is a network security system that controls the incoming and outgoing network traffic based on an applied rule set so it acts like a barrier between a trusted and secure network and another network Uh, that is example the internet that is assumed to not to be secure and trusted and firewall exists both as a software solution and as a hardware appliances firewall inspect all the messages that enter or leave the company's internet and block those that do not meet the specified security criteria that is the firewall so that is the firewall it is the barrier it is the barrier between the local area network and the internet we have two types of firewall that is hardware and software fire firewall so first of all uh, ha hardware firewall it is a physical piece of equipment that is capped between the internet and the lan network for example router so it is a physical device second one is software firewall software firewall is a program is a software program that is installed on our system it also works in the same way as the hardware firewall by monitoring and blocking the information software firewall as done by the hardware firewall is monitoring and blocking the information that comes to your computer through the internet for example we have multiple types of antivirus programs like norton 360 internet security casper sky avast then many more antivirus we have available in the market now types of firewall uh first is packet uh, filter which can inspects the packets that are going uh, transfers to uh, through firewall uh, from the internet to the uh, lan network 
that is in the packets. Second one is application level gateway that is FTP and Telnet circuit level get gateway through TCP and UDP connections. Proxy server which checks all the messages that enters or leave the network. Now first of all what is packet filters? Packet filters applies a set of rules of to each incoming IP packet and then forwards or discards the packet. Filter packets going in both the directions. The packet filter is typically set up as a list of rules based on the matches to fields in the IP or TCP header. Two default policies discard or forward. Either the whole message passes through the firewall. forward the whole message or the whole message is discarded. Next is application level gateway. It have uh, full access to protocol user request service from proxy. Uh, proxy validates request is legal then actions request and returns result to user. It can log audit traffic at application level. It needs separate pro uh, proxies for each services. For, uh, for example, some services naturally support proxy or others are more problematic. Next is circuit level gateway in which we uh, set up two TCP connections. Uh, the gateway typically uh, delays TCP segments from one connection to the other without examining the Contents. It imposes security by limiting which such connections are allowed. Typically used when trust internal users by allowing general outgoing outbound connections. Limitations uh, of firewalls are that it cannot protect from attacks uh, bypassing it. It cannot protect against internal threats and it cannot protect against transfer of all virus infected programs or files. There are uh, multiple type of techniques to identify the uh, firewall that is prior to hacking a system or software, a hacker tries to know what kind of firewall uh, hardware or software combination of both is implemented in it, port scanning, firewalking and banner grabbing in which it is detecting services run by the firewalls. Banners are the messages sent by hackers to a target system that is running and accepting the connection. So that's all for today. Thank you so much.